just for the audience and the people that are looking, it is never been this easy to make money online with Forex trading. That's really the biggest message. Don't give up and take this chance to actually like enjoy it. What's up traders? Welcome back to another TFT interview. My name is Kenta. Today we're joined with Jorn. He's from Belgium. He is funded with us over 600K or he's got max allocation 600K and he's got paid out over $22,000 with us and he's only been with us for a few months. So I'm really excited for this interview. Bjorn, welcome. How's it going, bro? Yeah, very good. Thanks for having me. Awesome. How you've gone into trading like in the first place? Well, I think it's very uh, stereotype. I got into trading about 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, there wasn't really a lot of knowledge about the trading space, uh, certainly not technical analysis. So I just went down, uh, opening a demo account, just playing around and maybe luck, maybe just, just coincidence, but I made some money, but that real money, it was just on demo account. Well, but that triggered me. I carried on, uh, I just opened a real account, uh, no funding yet said because it was 10 years ago and I just started trading. My first couple trades also went well, but it was just gambling. I just didn't know what I did. And then there was like a very large, uh, period of time. It was really like a bloodbath. So I went on trading, scaling accounts from thousand, 2000 euros onto let's say 10,000. And then I just lost it all and over and over and over and over again. After seven years, I just made my balance of what did I earn? Because I invested a lot of money, but also I invested a lot of time. And then the balance sheet was, I spent over hundred K of my own money on trading. Seeing it afterwards, it was just gambling because I didn't know what I, what I did. So I was always trading on crude oil, a very volatile uh, commodity. And I was just like gambling, really sentimental trading. So whenever it went up, I was like buying, but then it went down and I couldn't cut off my losses. So whenever I went into drop down, I was not disciplined enough. And I was just always like trying to hold on those losses. And so that went all for seven years. But then after making the balance for me, it was like time to decide or I stopped trading or I searched for a mentor, someone who already had some skin in the game, who managed a big account, who was a legit uh, person. And then I came into contact with uh, Armani Rojasekok, so I'm from Belgium, a, a very good trader. And I went on and worked with him like really one-on-one. -on -one. So really personal coaching from that moment that there was really playing field within trading. For instance, he said like, whenever you trade, don't risk more than 1%. You have to have a trading plan. You have to have like the basic knowledge of the technical analysis. Like it really clicked quite fast because I had some experience, like really gambling, but still I was reading, I was trying to learn some patterns. And then with this framework that I had, like really a trading plan, which really something to work with. And especially with the psychology of a trader is maybe the most important thing and um, things started to go well. So my account started to grow. I also sold my business just to start doing full-time trading. And then I actually scaled my funding until now I have something around uh, 3 million in uh, funded accounts. And with these funded accounts, I also fund my own account and now I'm actually a, a full-time trader, but it was a really long, difficult, harsh, process for sure man. yeah seven years so it's after seven years did you say you were you broke even on 100k or did you mean you were down 100k as, after seven years no i was down on 100k oh you were down uh, you're so after seven years you were looking at your balance sheet and you were down 100k and you thought yeah, to yourself like okay what do i do do i keep going or yeah I and mean, this is when you ran into your mentor are you still close with your mentor right now today actually now we are business partners 
Business partners, okay. We have like a coaching business within trading, but it's like really personal coaching. So now we are very close and working together. I experienced a lot of guys experience it. So they are trying to learn trading. It's not good. It's not wrong. We are all searching for like a holy grail of the technical analysis and the best strategy, but it's mainly we are focusing on the psychology part because mainly it's not a, the analysis. There are a lot of traders talking about the holy grail about trading. Is it smart money concept? Is it ICT trading? Is it like uh, breakouts, break retest, whatever you can do. Actually, it doesn't matter whatever trading strategy you're, you're trading. Whenever your risk to reward and your risk management is on point, then you can be profitable. So actually for me, it doesn't matter what kind of like trading strategy you're trading as long as your market psychology is just right, because then you can make money. That's the point of trading, actually, just to make money. I mean, after seven years of trading, I would assume you have some sort of knowledge, some sort of know-with-all, but obviously after you had your mentor, you started seeing, you know, you saw, started seeing profitability. What was that like thing that you shifted? Because it was seven years, right? So that's a long time. So if, for you to go from seven years to this last three years, you're up like, you know, you're profitable, you're 3 million in funding. Like, what was that? that shift because that's like, you know, pretty quick. It seems like after seven years to be able to like turn things around like that. Within these seven years, I was just hopping from strategy to tra uh, strategy and I couldn't cut losses. So for me, I'm really a winner. So I played also football and sports on a really high level. And you know, I always want to win. There was something I couldn't cut. I couldn't cut my losses. I know one of the first calls I had with my mentor, normally it would go through my stop loss. But what I did was I just moved my stop loss, some pips to the downside, because I thought like, uh, it will just go a little lower and then it will go up. Well, it actually did. So I was really happy. So I went to him. I said like, I saved the trade. I moved my stop loss. And then there was like a really silent moment. So it was just silent. I was like, oh, damn, is he mad? What happened? <laughs> yeah. what, what's really wrong? He, he really stared me dead in the eyes and said, if you do that one more time, just moving your stop loss, then it's, it's just done. You can, you can take your money and, and I won't mentor you anymore. Let us be very clear. These are the rules and you just have to stick with them. And for the first time, it was like, oh, shit, this is, this is real business. This is like professional trading. And then there was a lot of knowledge that I didn't know. Like, for example, backtesting. I didn't backtest and I didn't collect my data, uh, like journaling. I didn't journal my data. So there were a lot of tools that he gave me, like, hey, this is what you have to do to be a professional trader. With doing that, some things just clicked and it flipped the switch. It sounds like the backtesting and the journaling really helped. What do you do right now to be able to like, you know, I know there's like FX replay, like certain tools you can use, but like, what is your specific like strategy with backtesting and journaling? My main tools are just trading view and spreadsheet. And I use like um, two different methods. So first of all, I have a trading plan really mapped out. It's a document of like 20 pages, which really my strategy just really written out. And so there, there are no gray areas. So it's just white or black. And then the first method is just, I go back in history and I see everything. I just, I see it all. I just see a daily pattern. Then I will click on the replay button and I will just rewatch it. So I know it already played out, but I just want to learn about how the behavior is done. Then the second method is like really blind. So I put my graphics on the highest uh, time frame. I'll just go to 2019. Uh, click on the replay button, go on a daily time frame, and I'll just do one bar uh, again and again and again, just to like exercise my skills within the uh, trading view. Whenever I have a loss, I will document it. Whenever I have a break even, I will document it. And whenever I have a win, I will document it. The, the strength was uh, every week we had two calls. And in those two calls, I went over the backtesting with my mentor. So we had like a really good following up. And then he said like, oh, but you made this and this and this mistake. You didn't see it. Ah, okay. So I was always learning and adapting and adapting and adapting until now that I'm really have like a clean strategy. I know what I'm doing and I just repeat it every time again and again and again.
And what about journaling? Do you just same thing, spreadsheet, and you kind of take photos or like what do you? Yeah. So I build a, a very uh, clean spreadsheet. Uh, I put all the data in. Uh, within the data, make uh, pivot tables, and then in graphics. So I have everything like very cleaned out. I'm doing the weekly review, monthly review. Within my weekly review, I'm also like writing down my emotions. If there are any emotions, like is there a fear of missing out? Is there some greed uh, involved? Was I scared because I was in a drawdown? Whatever is playing in my mind, I just write it down and then we'll go over it maybe together with, with someone I know or uh, just me alone reflecting on my own week. Uh, because the most money we lose is the money we never make. So one of my, my biggest tasks in the weekend is just reviewing the missed trades. Trades that I had to take, but I didn't take them for whatever reason. Maybe I wasn't sharp enough. Maybe there was some emotional uh, burden that I, that I didn't take those trades. Actually, w whenever you lose a trade, it's just a minus one. But whenever you don't take a trade, and you had to take the trade, it's actually a minus four or minus five. You're not losing money, but you could have made um, some money. And also, of course, uh, if I have losses, why? Why is there a loss? And do I need to adjust something on my system, yes or no? Most of the time, it's no, because it just it is the system. I know I have a win rate between 50% and 60%. You know, four out of 10 trades just don't achieve you with the winner. So it's okay. Okay, so your your win rate's about 50 to 60%. Are you a strict like 2R or like 3R trader? Like, do you only aim for certain that that's it? Or like, how do you approach risk, like your, your risk to reward? So the minimal risk to reward is uh, 3.5. So whenever I take a trade, my projection is all, always the minimum of 3.5. And it goes up until maybe 8, 9% uh, that, that's the most, uh, most of the times. So it's always between three and a half and uh, eight. And are you always risking 1% or do you adjust your risk management based on certain things? It's actually based on my capital. So now with the 3 million, I don't need to actually like go full on and risk a percent. Because actually, if you really look at it, you can lose 10% in your account. Whenever you're risking like 1%, it's 10% of your whole account. Yeah, totally. So most of the times I'm using like a risk of uh, 0 0.75, like yeah, a little bit more safe. And whenever I'm in the plus, so whenever I'm like profitable and going like two or three percent uh, in in plus, then I will up my my risk. And do you approach like your evaluation stages differently than once you have your the live account? My challenges I will do them with one and a half percent risk. For me, for instance, like I know when I'm in drawdown on the account. I tend to lower my risk. Is that something that you do as well? Or do you always stick to the like one, 1.5%? One, 1. Yeah, I always stick to them. Because, you know, uh, I, I always play on leverage. You know, um, for, for me, buying a challenge, it's not really a big problem. It's it's thousand, thousand and, uh, and a little bit. But I already made like 150, 200K this year just by uh, with prop firms. So I know I can just risk it. It's, it's just really a leverage game. Um, if... if for example, whenever I do 10 challenges and I would miss 10 challenges, all right, I'm down 13, uh, 14K. But whenever I uh, complete a challenge, I can have a, a payout. Well, I just earned that money back. So I'm always trying to leverage. Um, also, I always do like two challenges at, at a time. So for example, also with the Funded Trader, I just took two times at 300K challenge and I just combined them both uh, and I just did them uh, together. Because for me, it's like the, the most efficient way um, also to combine them. Do you use like a, a tool or do you manually enter all your trades? No, I use a copy trader uh, because I manage around 11, uh, 11 accounts now. So just for me to have a clear overview and also uh, not to just always change from account to account uh, because then you're risking to, to make some errors, to make some mistakes. Um, in the beginning, when I, I just managed like four accounts, then I did it. So I, I was always changing from account to account. And then at one time, instead of putting in five lots, I set uh, 50 lots just because I was too quick. And then it was, uh, it was a loss. I lost my account. And from then on, I was just searching for a better solution. Yeah. 
to really like man manage the the accounts. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough mistake for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, that would be, I remember one time I was trading uh, trading gold, or I thought I was trading gold, and I entered the same amount of lots on silver, and I was like, "Why am I down like two percent right now so quickly?" It was crazy. Yeah, I'm assuming with the um, since you are like using a copy trader and that amount of capital, what, like you're probably trading on the higher time frame. I'm assuming like more of a yeah. swing trader. The lowest time frame I will go is at four hours. So I'm always like uh, making my analysis uh, based on a daily pattern. Then from the daily pattern, I will go to the weekly to just confirm my bias, uh, if I'm right is or no, if, if the price is just bullish is or no. And then I will use a four hour just to entry. Also like the, the combination of me trading and doing my daily job, being coaching people and also building the company, it's like really manageable because the people we coach are most of all also entrepreneurs. They just want to have some cash flow on the site. They are just managing their company or their business and on the site they can trade because just every four hours you have to take a decision. So it's it's like really simple. For me, the trades are really mapped out. Whenever I take a trade on Wednesday, most of the times I'm already like preparing the trade on Friday or Monday uh, even. So it's already mapped out. And are you trading just one specific thing or are you trading multiple yeah, I have like uh, 28 pairs. I know not a lot of people are doing it, but just because we are swing traders, we don't have like a lot of opportunities on just one pair. So we have like a really broad range of pairs. Uh, so we are trading the Canadian dollar, New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar, uh, British pounds, uh, Japanese yen, uh, US dollar and euro. And also uh, gold, oil and uh, silver. I was thinking the same thing. If I were to be trading on those higher time frames, I'd want to have a bigger selection of you know things to choose from because of the opportunities like let's say you have a position on one thing do you have like is there a rule there like where you can only have maybe one or two positions on at the same time or like what what does that look like for you well the most positions i will open is three at the same time whenever i'm still at risk so i have also a rule whenever uh, the price is at a certain point i will move my stop loss to break even so that position isn't at risk anymore. So I will not uh, open more than three uh, positions uh, at once when I'm at risk. So whenever there's a position open, not at risk anymore, then I can open another position again and again and again and again. Uh, but most of the times um, I'm only taking like 12 to 16 trades each month. So sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Um, I know in November it was like a really quiet month for me. But still managed the payouts uh, in November. But it was it was quite a month. I think it, I only took like uh, nine or ten trades. But that's it. And I don't need more than that actually, uh, because I know there are a lot of guys always telling me that ah you need to go to the lower time frames because then you have more opportunities. I know, but lower time frames, more opportunities, also more emotions. More emotions is more uh, mistakes. For now, I, I'm I'm pretty good uh, trading the higher time frames. Also with the larger capital, I'm always using a buy limit uh, or a sell limit. So I'm not really used to uh, the emotions uh, of the candle that is opening or closing or whatever. I don't really need to be on the charts. Uh, whenever I place my limit, then I'll just do something else. I have meetings, I have, I have just things going on. And then whenever I'm going in the trades, I will get an alert. I will look like, okay, did I really fill my position yet or no? I will not look at trading view or uh, MetaTrader. I will just step away from the charts, will trade, do whatever it do. I'm always telling myself, like, I do my job, now it's the market, and we can't control the market. I want to ask you, can, do you mind sharing your screen and maybe showing us, because I kind of want to pick your brain a little bit as you go through maybe like yeah. uh, a recent trade or something like that? We are not using any indicators, uh, something like that. So we have like clean, clean charts. Uh, the only thing that we are using is actually uh, the FIP tool. That's the only thing that we are using. So one of the trades that I took also with uh, having the payouts uh, was a trade on Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. And I will just do a brief uh, breakdown. Starting from this point, I was already interested in the trade. The main thing that we are always looking at is a daily pattern. And for example, we had four daily pattern. The first one is the bullish app. Just impulse, correction, impulse, correction, and other impulse. 
as long as we see impulses to the upside and we see higher highs, higher lows, I always want to look to the upside and always want to look to buy the trade. I'd like clean, higher highs, higher lows, and I expect the market to go down here and to go up uh, even there. So one of the first rules that I have is always uh, two things. Is the price still impulsive to the upside, yes or no? Well, here it's clearly a yes. And are we still making higher highs, higher lows? Uh, yes, we are still making higher highs, higher lows. Then I will take my uh, zip and I will just place it from the highest wick to the body. Then I have daily zip and then I have a daily zone that I have to identify. So I would always place my, my horizontal line on the 6180 and then I will go down to the first structure. What does the price like to do? It likes to go to the first structure. And from there on, uh, hopefully it will go up. So this was on Monday and I was already looking at the trade. Then I will just place my daily box and then it's just, I'll wait. Then I will go to the weekly and then the weekly has to confirm my bias. Now the thing that we saw was actually a very, very, very long downside momentum with always lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. And then for the first time in a long, long, long time, we really received a big push to the upside. So we received here some like a descending uh, channel. So the price really like uh, decelerated on this support level. And then we received some big pushes to the upside. Now I have four different criteria that I have to look at. First of all, is market structure. Are we bullish, yes or no? We have to be bullish. Here we are bullish. Then we have the last candle close. So last candle close was a red. So there it was against me. So it was that, that was not really playing for me. And then we have like the supply and demand zone. Now supply and demand zone is just where do I want to take the trade? And it's around this area on the, the higher time frames. I just see that this is also a very big supply and demand zone and also a buying zone. From here, there are a lot of buyers. Underneath, there are sellers. Here again, sellers, then buyers. So for me, those criteria, and then there is like a uh, SIP tool that I'm also using. But here in this case, I can't really use it because it's the first time we have a break. Two out of three that is playing for me. Uh, the only thing that is playing against me is uh, this red candle. So I can take the trade. And then I have to stay really like patient. My deal is almost hit. And then I have to look at the four hour to have an entry. And on the four hour, I have uh, five different entry types. I have a deceleration and deceleration is like a really, the, the price that decelerates. And then I have to have four candles on a row to actually take a trade. Now here I have one, two, three. So it's not enough. I can't take the trade, but I eat like one, two, three. And then I need a fourth one that actually that mean in the price. So here it wasn't not really possible. The second entry that I can take is a bullish gem, just like on the daily. And I have to have something like this. But also here, I didn't really receive a higher high and a higher low. And the price went more down. It actually almost looks like you got the consolidation in the opposite direction. Actually, w what we see is we still have our impulse to the upside and we still have our correction to the downside which for me is still fine. I don't really mind. The thing that I saw was my daily zone wasn't respected anymore. So then I have to zoom out again to the daily. And because this was the first day that my zone was hit, then we have a second day, third day, and this was on Friday. This is a very important thing where a lot of traders don't really take the long anymore, but we do. And this is what we call the fake out zone. And for me, the price is still bullish. For me to break the price, I need the candle close underneath the wick of this price. So the thing that happens here, and we like to trade it a lot, it's a, actually a daily fake out. The thing that happens here is there are a lot of sellers trapped because we have a lot of breakout traders. And the thing the breakout traders do is they see, all right, we close underneath the support level, we must go down. 
those are the first traders that are actually trapped. Then the second traders are those who actually want to do the break and retest. Who is moving on? Those are the big banks and institutes. They're, they will buy with a lot of power. So then I can go to the four hour again and look for an entry. So first of all, I receive consolidation. So I can take my first long here. So wait, that's that's three like those three uh, consolidation candles are enough for you to give give you that entry. Yeah. So like the first one, the second one, the third one. It's important that they touch a small zone, and then I'm here involved in a trade. My stop loss was really small. Was something like this. After that third candle, did you set like a, a like a limit, a buy limit, and then? Yeah, indeed. For me, it's important to have like one blue candle because I really need to see that the bulls are are presented at some. So that's, that's a very important thing for me. So I'd like a risk to reward of 14. Whenever I have something above 10, I will just go over it and add some pips because I don't really like it to be above 10. Um, so I think it was 17. So that was the first entry. Then I was involved. This, this was on a Monday. And what did we receive? We received our second entry. Bullish M. So whenever I receive a bullish M, I can just place a second limit or a second zone on the first structure. And the nice detail of the structure of this zone. So whenever we look at the price and how it's behaving, it's just really the same as in history. So we went from this point to this point. Went from this point to this point. Went from this point again higher. And you see this little touch of the blue candle. That's where actually the zone is. There is where the liquidity was found last time. Then I took my second position long again beneath the structure and then again to the minus 27. That's also something very important. In minus 27, we always use it as our take profit. Not like, oh, we go to this zone or we have this extension. It's just minus 27, that's it. Then again, it was just waiting, involved in a second position. And this was with CPI. The good thing, as, as you can see here, there is really a lot of power. And looking at this trade afterwards, we received some, some big moves after it. So it turned really, really quick to the upside. Your first position, you risked what? 0 0.7, 0 0.75 on the first position, I'm assuming, because you were yeah. saying that. Okay. And then did you set your, like, since you were putting on another position, like, or- Yeah, you... stop loss on break even. Stop loss on break even on that one. Okay. And then the other position was also 0.75 risk, I'm assuming. Yeah, indeed. As so, because it was CPI, is it? It doesn't matter. Like it, you know, with news coming out, like are you leaving that first position with the risk on still, just to give it room to breathe, or like what? How do you approach when it when you have you know news is about to be around the corner? We have just rules uh, for yeah. news events, okay. uh, but it's just certain news events. So I know when when CPI came out, it was this candle here. So we were still running in profit. So whenever it is CPI. FOMC interest rates of the TXY, then we, we will really be careful just because of the spreads, because of the high volatility. I already experienced it in the past, like whenever we have NFP, FOMC interest rate or CPI, and certainly last year with the interest rates getting really high and it was always like big volatility with those uh, news events. Spreads were getting high, and whenever we were tapped out, just a stop loss or even a break even, we had a lot of slippage on all the accounts just because of the high volatility and field spreads on all the accounts. On those, we are really careful, but this time we are already in uh, profits. We set our uh, stop loss on break even on both position, and it just went up. Maybe luck, maybe not. Um, I think most of the times, technical parts will win of the fundamentals, mostly the fundamentals that will drive the price, but the technical part that you can position yourself where the prices go. Yeah, these are the kinds of trades we always take. So always starting from the daily, we need a daily pattern, uh, going on the weekly to see if our bias is right, yes or no, and then executing on the four-hour time frame. 
I mean, it's it seems like some basic market structure what you're looking at, right? But mm -hmm. you know, because I've I've with the swing trading, it seems that the news events can be very helpful sometimes with you know pushing trades in your direction. Obviously, it could stop you out just as quickly. Is that something that you account for? Maybe like knowing like okay, tomorrow or the next day we have this news event coming out. Are you looking at fundamentals like in t like ahead of time to think like okay, market structures this way you know, the forecast is this for this news event, I'm going long, or how do you look at like fundamentals? We, we actually never look at fundamentals. The only thing that we are looking at is just whenever the, the event is coming up, because we always want to protect our capital. For me, the main part is actually like, I, I want to make money, of course, but I also want to protect my capital. But let's say, for example, price was just ranging here, a little bit in drought. Then I would just close my position before even the news event went. It's, it's just whenever the price is between uh, zero and minus one, then I always just close my position. Whenever the volatility is that big and the spreads are getting high, I will just be stopped out at minus one. I can't actually win whenever I'm here just like consolidating yeah, in the loss, lo losing position. So that's just the rule that I'm always focusing on. Then I will just take a small loss of minus uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And then sometimes, yeah, the price moves up. But I know with the spreads, I would just be tapped out. So so this one, like luckily you were in, in profit on both positions. So you just set you just set your stop loss to break even and just let it ride. Yeah, indeed. That one played out real nice. So do you have like every four hours, do you have an alarm like kind of set set you to like check the charts or do you set alarms for specific pricing? Like what do you... Well, most of the times like, uh, for example, today, I made my daily breakdown. As you've seen, I need really a daily, a daily pattern and daily zone has to be hit. So most of the times, like for example, tomorrow, I will just be looking at two or three pairs at most to execute. And then my biological clock is already ticking at 3 a.m., um, 7 a.m., 11 a.m., 3 p.m., 7 p.m. I just know that I have to look at the charts. Um, so it's like I'm already doing it for three years now. I already know whenever it's time. In the beginning, uh, I, have a, I have a social media agency or digital marketing agency. And whenever I had a meeting uh, between those hours, I just set a small alarm with, with the phone was just buzzing. And then I just like said, like, mm, can you excuse me? I have to go to the toilet, go to the bathroom. <laughs> then I went to the bathroom, just like I looked at my um, at my meta trader or at my trading view. Do I have to set a position, yes or no? It just takes like five minutes, actually, because everything is mapped out because we have a lot of time, um, actually. So yeah, then it was just like, do I have to set a position, yes or no? If it's no, okay, I can go back to the meeting. If it's yes, I just put my position real quick uh, and I'll go back to the meeting and that's it. So uh, it's really fun to combine it. Like the strategy specifically, is it always the, the consolidation? You have to have that as a requirement to enter like those three to four consolidation candles. Like give us a little bit of thought process as well when you're like looking at this, maybe even from like a month perspective ahead like when do you start like looking at it and going i'm actually starting to get interested in this thing like how does that like work like how, do, how does that work out for you actually in this whole uptrend we were taking trades i took a trade on this area and on this area so that's where i took a trade why was i actually looking at these trades uh first of all we were just in an uptrend and still we were pushing higher highs higher lows you can notice it as well you see, like, like the bullish power isn't really there anymore. If you're looking at really the structure, we have like an ascending triangle. I was just like waiting, actually. Here I was really waiting on the break and maybe the reversal having a shoulder one, the head, and a shoulder two. But what happens? A very big push to the downside then. Then I'm always curious, where does the price stop and why does it stop there? So... I will always place my uh, horizontal line to see whether this is a big zone, yes or no. Then I will go to the weekly, always the higher time frames because for me, the higher time frames have more like weight or more importance than the lower time frames. So whenever we are looking at this zone, we had some pretty big moves in the past uh, coming from this zone. 
Also, this is a little bit too far, uh, but still, we are looking at a, a pretty decent supply and demand. So the most important thing is when was I actually looking at a price setup? Whenever this weekly candle closed. Why? Because for me, it was really important to see whether the bulls were present, yes or no. So as long as we are in impulse to the downside, I will not catch any falling knives. So I will wait until I have like a blue candle. I have some like confirmation that the bulls are present. Two things playing for me. The supply and demand zone is playing for me and I have the weekly candle close is playing for me. Then the thing we, uh, or I projected was whenever I take my flip from the lower low to the lower high, my projection was that we have to touch again this zone because we have a clean like impulse to the upside. We have a correction with the trends, clean break, then we have to retest it and go to the downside. Then on the daily time frame, then I have to wait until there is a clear push to the upside because I want to see a impulsive phase of the bulls. Because whenever there is an impulsive phase of the bulls, then for me it's clear bulls are present and I can position myself. Here I received the big push. Take my tip from the higher high to the higher low, or just the lead. Then I place my daily zone on the first structure. Because we have a very big supply and demand zone from the past, I can enter pretty aggressive. On the daily, this first push, for me, it's not a push. Maybe a dead uh, cat bounce. It's maybe a little, some sellers going out to market. It's not really a clear push of the buyers. So for me, this the second push, that was really like, all right, there are buyers. Yeah, whenever the first uh, uh, day was, was finished, I was already looking at the price. Then we received a pretty aggressive push to the downside. Did you already have a buy limit set before this came down or do you wait to see a confirmation in the four hour? Here I was pretty aggressive and I actually, I uh, entered this price with a FIP completion. What is a FIP completion for us? So here in this four hour, who was stronger? Bulls or bears? So for me it was the bears because the impulse was to the downside and the correction was to the upside. Again, push to the, um, to the downside. So for me, it's a three leg correction. So we have an impulse to the upside, three leg correction. And then most of the times we just receive a big push to the upside. Then I will take also my FIP from low to the high. And I'll just put it in red. And then here on this zone, there is something really special happening actually. Like those sellers will get out of the market because they are satisfied, they have their target. And we have here a big buying zone of these buyers, they will come in the market. So all these sellers that are leaving the markets come into the markets and are leaving the markets and get into uh, like buy orders. And we have some buy orders sitting here. So again, I took a long position just on this zone, then stop loss, just a little bit below here. And then I take profit was around this one uh, that I need to take again my FIP from the high to the low daily TP so then we went pretty aggressive to the downside I was stepped in and we went pretty aggressive to the upside interesting so you you decided you saw the the three leg uh, correction to the 20 the negative 27 percent and so you that's a confirmation of like the bears are ready to take their profits. And so buying will step in and that level is a, a higher level, a level of a demand. So, yep. okay, interesting. Then we received like, um, for us, it's like a fake out flag. So we received the, the three leg confirmation, one, two, three, break of structure. We come back to the first shoulder. And then for me, there was a scaling. So again, this one was on break even. Scaling was put on per shoulder, always on the bodies because the power is on the bodies, not on the wicks. Stop loss underneath those wicks and a little bit of room and take profit was here a little higher. And then we went pretty aggressive again. We went up last week. I also took a trade uh, here short, like I had a shoulder. Um, that's also another uh, explanation. I think those two were the most aggressive uh, entries that I took and not really on the deceleration, but really on aggressive price action and really liquidity zones.
So I have different strategies to actually go into the markets, but with strict rules every time. You said like the minimum you'll, you're aiming for is 3.5, but with those yep. ones, you're aiming to the negative uh, 27 on those ones. And yep. with those ones specifically, once it hit TP, like you're out, it, you had your TP set and it's good to go. And I'm out. Yep. And the first trade, it went up significantly, like almost hit your TP, came back down. You're still holding that thing? like. Yep, still holding. Tell me like a little bit about the psychology with that, like the aspect there. Cause I know like some traders are going to see it, you know, getting towards TP, they might be wanting to get out. Like, is that similar kind of to what your mentor is saying? Like, don't ever move your stop loss, like kind of thing. Like, is that same with the TP? Like, how does that work? Well, for me, the, the take profit is a different approach for every trader. Um, because I know some traders, they like to take partials yeah, for instead, um, they have a big push to the upside. We have a break of structure and they will take partials just half of their position out, um, or they will just move their stop loss and using a trading stop. Actually for me, I'm, I'm pretty like solid, uh, in it. Whenever I receive some kind of structure, I will just delete it. Um, those two, because it's just going for the price action. So I entered the price here and then again, we had structure. So we had the higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. And then we had the push. So my stop loss was moved to here. For me, market structure is one of the most important things within trading because most of the times market structure will be respected. So again, price went down until here, then we went up and I can just move my stop loss again and again and again. But whenever uh, I hit the daily TP, I will go out uh, the market. Uh, we'll just take my take profits, uh, take the money and uh, that's it. It's a different, definitely mentality to be able to swing trade, you know, because you could be in trade for so long and be up on, on your trade and been sitting there for two days or whatever or day. And then, and then, you know, next thing you know, like a day passes and you're like basically break even. Did you transition into that type of trading, like from those seven years into what you have now, or were you trading on lower time frames before? Like, how did that? I was trading on the five minute and the 15 minute uh, charts on crude oil. So that was always on the chart. So I had no, uh, I had no peace. You know, I was just always on the charts, trying to a high level, um, put, put every time some, some trades. But then like for the first time in my whole trading career, I experienced some peace within trading. So it, it was kind of hard in the beginning. And I know sometimes I was rebellious and, and trying to go to the, to the one hour and just to see whether price moved just a little bit nicer or that I could take more trades. Whenever I did it, like I had more losses and with those more losses came more frustration and with more frustration was just bad energy leaving my corpse. So the big mindset switch was this one. What is more difficult? Making 10% on a 200K or making 2% on a 1 million account. Or what's more difficult, the 10%, the more, more difficult would be the 10% on, yeah. Indeed. So there are a lot of traders aiming on getting those big percentages. If I, also when I talk to traders, they are like, I want to make consistently 15% or more uh, each month. I'm like, okay, that's, that's, <laughs> that's possible. That It is possible, but it's really hard. Um, and you will not find any peace. And I mean, uh, for this, for the long game, I want to do this for, for really years and years and years. So I figured whenever my capital would grow and I would have just have a bigger capital, then I only need like three, four or 5%. So that really gave me a peace of mind because then we can just break it down to have 3% a month or 4% or 5% a month. What do we need? Actually just one good setup. Not even more than one good setup. Whenever you have like one good setup or two or three, now I have also trades running and I'm not even looking at those trades. I can sleep at night. When I talk with a lot of traders, what is the main goal of those traders? Well, first of all, making money, but second of all, having time. But most traders are actually a slave of their charts because if they're not behind the, the computer um, or behind the desktop, looking at trading view, they're always checking the, the meta trader on their phone or on the trading view. They're not really at peace and they're always like nervous. And actually they are more a slave than, than they would work in nine to five. 
you you have a great point there. I mean, it's it's funny you like the general you know like trader that gets into it. It's like oh, I'm gonna get a bunch of time. Like I'm gonna get a bunch of money and I'm gonna get my time back. I don't have to work a nine to five, and then all of a sudden you're working like twenty hours. <laughs> you know, like, it's like <laughs> what do you do? It's, you know, it's like well, you you know you have to put in the work. You have to put in the time to learn the skill. But the overall picture here is to get your time back. So, I mean, yeah. it makes sense, you know, if you can have a strategy that, you know, can give you back your time during the day, like it, whether or not you are scalping, maybe you're only spending those first hour and a half, two hours in the morning, or if you're, you know, like you're doing what you're doing, you might even be still spending an hour or two, but in, it's more of a different type of trade. You're, you're entering it so you can just kind of walk away and not think about it. Um, I know some traders that are just uh, trading the, the New York opening for 30 minutes. They try to take one or two trades and then they're out. Well, that's also fine. So that's what I, I try to say always. Like, it's not a strategy. It's not the time frame. It, it's not really depending on that. Just the mindset and the professionalism that you can bring on the table. I think trading is one of the most high-performing jobs in the world. And you have to treat it like a high-performing job. Um, so you really have to study, you have to journal, you have to backtest. There is some works coming with trading, but the reward is so much higher than just working nine to five. You said you're now you're you're trading full time, and you're also uh, have like a trading, um, like a coaching program or like a coaching business. Tell us a little bit about it. Like, what if people want to reach you, or if, like, what what do you got going on with that? Uh, actually, what we saw in the trading space was there was a lot of low ticketing um, solutions for, for trading. Uh, communities where you can just uh, join for uh, 100 euro each month or 200 euro each month. They, they will teach you a certain strategy, just showing you some videos and, and that's it. Most of those people, they will um, go in there and have a bad experience. Why? Because they don't understand psychology. That's the thing we do completely different. We really coach people on a personal level. So the thing that I did with Armani, having the one-on-one the -on -one coaching, now we are duplicating those theories and psychology, but really the coaching uh, part uh, in, in small groups. Now, everyone that joins us, and it's more high ticketing, just got to be honest, it's not for, for everyone. Like a university, it's really an intensive program of one year. Uh, not just uh, one month or two months because it's just too little to really learn the skill. And we are really guiding people from zero knowledge to yeah, being a funded trader or just being a profitable trader. With that, we also combine it with some performance coaching. And we have a lot of entrepreneurs. Whenever entrepreneurs uh, are trading, we can see their, uh, their flaws if they're not like patient enough if they are greedy. So whenever they are not patient enough, we just ask them the question, where else are you not patient? Yeah, I don't know, tell me. And I say, maybe your business. And then we just let them see where they are not patient. And most of the times they're not patient with their business. What does that cost you? Well, it costs me this deal or it costs me this uh, employee or something like that. So we are really combining like the coaching aspect on some businesses and trading. That's something we combine with really creating a high ticketing uh, network because everyone that joins us is high ticketing. We, we really are uh, building a network for uh, those people. And I think in Belgium and the Netherlands or just in Europe, it's like really a unique concept uh, that we are creating. Well, the website is the forexdictionary.com. Uh, they can find me on my socials. Uh, it's just my name, uh, Björn Cornelissens. I will also provide you my socials so can, you can share it. Uh, because one of our missions is actually to make as many people financial literate as possible. In this world with the uh, currently education system, uh, it's something that isn't spoken um, a lot about. So yeah, definitely. Let's just say we have a trader right now that's watching this. He's struggling, he or she's struggling. Maybe they've had an account, they've blown it, or maybe they're still just struggling to get, you know, funded or maybe with their live capital. What do you suggest this person, you know, their approach and what, what they should they should do? Yeah, first of all, don't give up. In this space now at this moment, it, it has never been this easy to make money in Forex, for sure, because of the funding programs, because of the knowledge that is, is given throughout the internet. 
But I think the, the main advice that I can give is like, back test your strategy and ask yourself, is your trading plan really black and white? So do you know your rules and do you also put those rules to work? That's the first one. Um, second one is look at your risk management. Because with a lot of traders that I talk to, they are too greedy. So they are running 3% uh, in profit and then they will just risk 5 or, or, or 4%. percent doesn't make any sense. Use a proper risk uh, management. Use a proper risk to reward. Just exercise your uh, or practice your uh, strategy within TradingView. It's like pretty easy. You just go to replay. You just start with exercising. So every gamble is some data. And whenever there is a gamble or a pattern that you can trade, trade it. Try to make mistakes, learn from those mistakes and try to implement them within your demo account. First of all, whenever you are profitable with your demo account, then try to achieve a challenge, but don't give up. That's the, that's the main advice that I can give. Yeah, I'm sure there's there's probably a lot of people watching. They're like, you're 10 years in. So it's like, you guys are watching this right now and you're only like a year in and you're, and you're feeling like giving up already. Like, take a look at this guy. He's 10 years in. It took him seven years to get to like, you know, actually kind of going over that. Uh, not saying that that's what's going to happen to you guys, but like, look what he had to change. Like what, he, what how he went for it. He found a mentor. Like he changed things. He implemented the back testing, the journaling, that type of thing. So you know, don't give up. I believe so too. I'm like, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, you don't want to feel so like, you don't want to rush this thing. It's a process, right? You will not succeed within the first six, seven, eight, nine months. It, it is normal to fail. That's why there is a big stigma around Forex trading. People go within Forex trading. They don't actually know what they are doing. They are losing money and then they'll say Forex is a scam. It's not a scam. You just don't know what you're doing. And that's okay. That, that's, that's fine. There needs to be more spoken about the reality about Forex trading. It is really a high demanding skill. It's not for everyone. You just have to put in the work. But if you really have a desire to make this work, don't give up and just try to be professional. Outside of trading that you've implemented that maybe has helped you within your trading, you know, you've started developing your discipline and consistency and then that kind of spilled over into your life, like in some ways, like, how, is there like a relationship there? Well, I was already very disciplined in my life just because I played soccer on a very high level. So I always was very disciplined. Now, the thing that I see is just get your life in order. If you're really living in chaos. Most of the times your trading will be shit. So <laughs> um, also last year, there was a period where I had some personal issues, where there were, there was some emotional things going on uh, with the family and stuff. Then for me, it was just take a step aside. Don't trade. You really have to be at peace of mind. So that's maybe something that I implemented in my life. I don't need any bullshit in my life. Whenever there is something going on, uh, like it's not worth my time or... There are some people nagging or like, like really uh, getting up my ass that then, yeah, I just cut them off and just be at peace with yourself uh, because that's the most important thing within trading because you can't make any impulsive mistakes or because those are expensive. You know, if you're, if you're living in chaos, then your, your trading is probably going to be chaos. So it's great advice. You know, don't think you need to trade. If you're having issues with who, you know, family, friends, whatever, like just in general, work, whatever, just not taking a trade is better than losing a bunch of money. So, <laughs> indeed, right? indeed. And then, yeah, man, is there anything else that you want to like tell our audience before we go? Just for the audience and the people that are looking, it is never been this easy to make money online with Forex trading. It has never been this easy. There is no time limit anymore. I did all those stages. First of all, I had just my, my real account. Then I had the stage of um, passing the challenges with uh, 30 day in the first phase, uh, 60 day in the second phase. That's really the biggest message. Don't give up and take this chance to actually like enjoy it. There are so many opportunities away from just the system, the nine to five. There is so much more to enjoy in life. Yeah, just try to enjoy the process. That's also something very important. Don't be uh, focused on the results, but be focused on the process. I agree. That's awesome. I appreciate your time, man. 
I know the audience is going to find this very helpful. Dude, this guy is, literally has 3 million in prop money. He's got it, you know, he's making money. He's gotten over 200K in payouts. Like, come on, like, if you have to rewatch this, you know, look at the things that he's doing, what he's implementing and and try it for yourself. And don't don't rush the process. Like, you know, really dive into the details and look at what you're doing and really believe in what you're doing. Build that confidence, right? But yeah, man, thanks, Bjorn. I appreciate your time. Uh, hopefully we can have you on like a part two at some point, maybe down the road. Uh, maybe you'll have like 10 million in prop funding or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I would love to. I would love yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. Then then you get 1%. You're looking pretty. You know what I mean? <laughs> awesome. Indeed. Indeed. Awesome. Well, I wish you the best and thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. See you in the next one. <laughs>